We all love a story of redemption, a cinematic arc of adversity turning to triumph. Most of the time we have to turn to Hollywood for these tales of difficulty and victory, but sometimes, very rarely, we get to witness them take place in real life. We get to see a hero rise, fall, and rise again. And we get to cheer them on while they do. Former two-time UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir is a beloved name in MMA with the longest uninterrupted tenure of any fighter for the UFC organization from 2001 to 2016. In that time, he has had 19 wins and 13 losses and holds the record for the most finishes and the most submission victories in UFC history. Mir is largely considered one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time, not just because of what the stats say, but because of his incredible comeback story, including a near career-ending injury, a remarkable recovery, and a chance to fight back against both his opponents and his personal demons, and write a whole new chapter in his amazing life. Like, share, and subscribe to Ultimate Fighting Network as we find out what it would really be like to fight UFC heavyweight champion, Frank Mir. You know, a lot of people make mistakes in life where they have things that are hardships that they go through and they wait for that opportunity to redeem themselves. And I've been given another opportunity by the UFC to go out there and show that I can still perform at a high level. And really, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we all want wins. But uh, at this point, I just want to perform at a high level again and show that what I'm capable of doing. Going out there and not only losing sucks, but going out there not performing at what I know I'm able to perform at, that hurts. You know, that's even more painful than the loss. Frank Mir was born in Las Vegas, Nevada, to parents who owned and operated an American Kempo school, and who took an early interest in making Mir a champion. He became a black belt as a teenager, and his father encouraged him to learn wrestling, as it would help him avoid submissions in his matches. A lifelong athlete, Mir played football and wrestled in high school, as well as competing in track and field. Mir was scouted for the UFC after meeting UFC matchmaker Joe Silva at a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school and after winning two professional debut fights at Hook and Shoot Showdown 2001, Mir signed on with the UFC. From 2001 to 2004, Mir climbed the rankings, only losing once on his road to the heavyweight championship and collecting submissions and finishes along the way. His rise seemed completely unstoppable. In June of 2014, Mir faced off against Tim Sylvia for the vacant heavyweight title. His victory was quick and decisive. 50 seconds into the first round, Mir broke Sylvia's right arm in multiple places, forcing the referee to stop the fight in front of an angry, unaware audience. Well, that was one of those things where I felt an obligation to not just interview the fighter, but to explain to the entire crowd, like, mm -hmm. you gotta listen. This is a, I know it looked crazy, looked crazy to me too. This is a broken arm. Like this guy's fucked right now. Frank Mir emerged the heavyweight champion, but the high of victory and a career on the rise would not be long lived. A few months after his win over Sylvia, Mir was in a horrific accident, knocked from his motorcycle by a car, leaving him with a broken femur and torn ligaments in his knee. Doctors told him that he would possibly never walk again and would certainly never fight again, and his title was vacated due to his inability to defend it. Faced with a career fading away, Mir spiraled into depression and substance abuse. He kind of was like Superman, like that's the best analogy I could say. You know when you're watching Superman the movie and Superman, the kryptonite comes in and he like loses all of his powers and you just like, you just, you almost, lose like all hope for him you're just like god you know it, it you you know he's superman but to see him so weak it doesn't like register with you and he might have stayed there in that dark place if it wasn't for loyal family friends and the will to fight back against a seemingly unsurmountable challenge and i remember thinking i i he's there like i know it i know this is not his destiny this is not the end for frank Mir. it just isn't with the help of his wife and family, Mir trained hard to recover from his injuries and pull out of his addiction, and slowly but surely was able to agree to a fight again. This will 
to keep fighting and the power of his family's love surely saved his life. In 2006, Frank Mir returned to the UFC. His first return fight was not a triumph. He lost in a first round TKO. The second fight garnered him a victory by decision, and despite his sloppy, unkempt appearance and the worry by pundits that he had lost his former magic, the win boosted his self-esteem. Mir continued to fight up the rankings once again. He no longer had the streak of victories he had had before his accident, but every win got him closer and closer to regaining the title he had lost so painfully. In 2008, after appearing alongside Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira as coaches in the Spike TV reality show Ultimate Fighter, Mir fought Nogueira in the octagon for the interim UFC Heavyweight Championship. Mir won by TKO through his superior striking, regaining the interim title, but would not gain the belt. He would go on to lose in a title bout rematch with rival Brock Lesnar the following year. Mir would go on to say that he always felt that championship was his, despite the loss to Lesnar. Even though his career continued on, Mir would never again regain the title. But he did manage to become a household name, chiefly through his signature fighting style. Frank Mir is a thoughtful, strategic power fighter. He has a southpaw stance and a long history of skill in grappling. Among UFC fans and fighters alike, it's well known that if Frank Mir gets you in a hold, he will not stop until he breaks you. In a rematch with Nogueira in 2011, Mir got Nogueira into a Kimura and the Brazilian would not tap, so Mir snapped his arm. This is typical of Mir's style, which has always featured his wrestling and groundwork skills prominently. He is particularly fond of submitting his opponents with arm bars or knee bars, causing them to tap or snap. In his later career, Mir worked hard to improve his striking, and a few of his victories have shown off this skill. But most of his famous wins have been about his superior ability to trap and keep his opponents on the ground. In the end, Mir is an instinctual fighter who continues to draw on his long experience of fighting since childhood and his fearsome reputation in the octagon. So then when they call you out into the hallway and you're sitting there and you're bouncing around, that's when I feel great. That's when it's finally like, I'm just going to just try to hurt this person so badly that they'll never, ever, and if anybody else says, hey, should I fight Frank Mir? I want them to be like pleading with them. No, oh, look at the scars on my arm, don't do it. In 2017, Mir was released from the UFC at his own request, and by August of that year, it had been revealed that he had signed with Bellator MMA. After three fights with the organization, in 2020, his contract expired. And as of 2020, Mir is a free agent. Rumors persist about where he'll go next, but nothing is currently confirmed. It is unclear where a fighter like Mir will go in the future. His is a career that has spanned not only decades, but a push through adversity and an unwillingness to surrender. In a twist of irony, the fighter who is famous for causing his opponents to submit refused to submit when it seemed like his career was over. He may never have regained the record of his younger years, but Frank Mir emerged from the ashes of his pain and rebuilt his career and his life. Wherever he chooses to go next, one thing is for certain. No one is going to bring him down without a fight. And so it was just about problem solving. And in the end, I came through victorious, but that's why I love this fight so much. It's probably my favorite fight of mine because I can use it as an example to my children. Like here, I was doing very badly at the beginning. Yeah. And this is why and how I was able to turn it around, not by sulking and not by, oh my God, why did I end up here? Why me? It's like, ah, it is what it is. It happened. Uh, you know, in, the, in another time I can work on how to prevent it, but let's not waste seconds worrying about that now. Just, you know, life's a math problem. Okay, well, what's the next solution? Well, go here. Okay, now what's the next thing we need to do? Now go here. What's the next thing we need to do? We need to go here and just keep on working and marching forward.